her stuff. Now, Dolly was saying that she ch- tried to act out all the characters, and it was funny because she she was been talking about the the women and how right the sympath- sympathy she had for yeah. the women characters, but the character she sh- chose to act out was Mr. Hart. Was Mr. Hart? I thought that was very interesting, and how she said that she really tried to get into his head. Can you tell me about that? how? This is a show where the two women are, are driving the truck. How did you guys just pick the song for him, and what kind of song did you write for him? Well, the thing about Mr. Hart is, you know, people always think about the three women, but I mean, the the, you know, uh, things are only as strong as the villain. You got to have a good villain. And who better than Mark Kudish? And who Mr. Villain? Absolutely, and he he does a great job. He's extremely funny. And very sleazy in still kind of an attractive way. He did play Satan le- yes. less than two years ago. Yeah, that's right. right. That's right. Um, you know, when we were looking, Dabney Coleman did such an amazing job with that character. It was, you know, we thought we'd have a tough time finding somebody. We didn't want somebody to replicate him. You know, you, you want them to do their own version. And Mark really, really came in and nailed it. And his song is about... Um, his longing for Dorley, for his secretary. And um, I, I think Dolly definitely got into his head. And he also actually, he has another song where, when he's tied up where he, it's called Mundania. And he talks about how mundane his life is, tied up in a room with no golf and no sex and just watching television. And so he's got a couple it's of... It's tough. Songs. Yeah. It's a rough one. Yeah. Uh, um... I'm sorry, you just said something so interesting that, that, that clicked in my head. Um, talking about Dabney. But, uh, I know, about Mark and, uh, oh, and, and his character. Um, his longing, that was it. Uh-huh. He said, I know she said longing yes. for his secretary, not yes. his, like his lust for his secretary. Yes. Is, is, there, is there something more to his interest in his secretary? Well. Is it real longing? I mean, it's certainly based on lust, but I really think it's... I, I think he's obsessed with her. I mean, I think it's more than than just uh, she's one of 50 secretaries that he, you know, he'd love to bang. I mean, I think there's something specific, and 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 I think to write a good villain, you you do need to. Villains never think they're vi- they're villains. You know, the people we know that we don't consider good people, I'm sure. They don't think they're not good people. So when you write them, you can't write them from the outside going, what a jerk. I mean, he he feels that everything he does and says um, is right and um, she should be with him and he has reason she should be with him. And, and, and it had to be written from that point of view. And I, I, I think it was. How have the country people meshed with the Broadway people? Really, the only country person is Dolly. Um... Dolly can mesh with anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, everyone loves her. Well, I had a lot of fun doing it. it personally, for me, the most fun I've ever had at the song uh, I don't know how good it is. I just hope that it's good. I had a great time doing it. And they all say it's good. And like I say, we won't know until the next morning after we wake up. Mark Hudish and Stephanie J. Block star in the upcoming Broadway musical, 9 to 5. Robert Viaga spoke to them at a recent press preview. Tell me, I'm very interested in the songs that have been written for the, for the two of you in this show. Dolly's songs that she's written for Broadway. What are they like? Are they country songs? Are they Broadway songs? You guys would know. You guys have sung enough of them. Well, I think this piece lends itself to have a complete spectrum of music. And... Um, Dolly's sensibility for that is quite genius. I think uh, Broadway audiences are going to be surprised because her language goes far beyond country songs. Um, I can speak for my character that... Tell me the name of your character. I am. I play the Jane Fonda role, which is Judy Burnley, mm-hmm. which is now the Stephanie J. Block role in the musical, I'm That's happy right. to the say. <laughs> but, you know, this character starts out very meek, and she's still trying to find who she is as a single woman since her husband has recently left her. And the voicing of that she certainly explains that part of her character. By the end of Act Two, she finds her strength. She finds her, quote-unquote, balls, as I'm sure Mark Kudish would put it. And that song 
really shows where this character is at every point of the play. So What's the title? It's called Get Out and Stay Out is the last the last song that I get to sing. And it kind of, it, it, you sign, the song also develops throughout the show, you're oh, saying? Oh, yes. The song develops throughout the show. The song develops in the five-minute marathon of which the song is. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I think the music in the show is really going to get, well, the, mu- the opening number alone, that sort of metronome, that ticking, that sort of pace continues through the entire play. Mm-hmm. But it's syncopation, you know? I mean, that's kind of what's cool about it. I mean, you know, you have to remember the period of time, the fact that people punched into work, so there's the whole theme of sort of a ticking clock, or, you know, you have, you know, the, the, the typewriter ticking, and a clock is ticking, and, like, everybody's, that's, that's the tension of the show. I like the busy signal in company. Yeah, to a certain degree, you know, I mean, that's what, you know, people say, oh, is this relevant to today? But what's cool about it is it's 1979, and the more specific that you get that the year that you're in, the more universal it becomes. And the joy of doing it to a certain degree is also remembering, you know, it's remembering that this was the behavior of the period of time. Franklin Hart is a very strong product of his time period. You know, and it's the last bastion of real machoistic kind of quasi masochistic <laughs> and that's of course all gone now <laughs> no let, let's put it but you know what though let, let's put it this way it was it was on it was it wasn't below the de- the desk do you know what i mean i mean this it was still when it was above board it was still when it was practical behavior when men had a life in the office and a life at home and they flaunted them both and it was an understood and accepted you know way it was worn as a badge rather yeah, than I mean, now you know, I, there was no such thing as sexual harassment in 79. By 80, 81, there was. And that says a lot. You know, well, I mean... What you, it was called that. There was plenty of it before that. Yeah, but exactly. Look, man, you know... Secretary is not a toy. It wasn't defined, yeah. No, but I mean, I think it's kind of cool. I think we forget. We, we forget very easily. We're a very fast-moving society. And I think we forget certain accomplishments, and I think we forget that we're, you know, very likely still there. So you'll see behaviors, and you'll go, wow, we really did behave that way. That's not made just some a progress. character. And we've made some progress. And then there'll be those moments where you go, we haven't moved an inch, you know? And like she was saying, you know, she's got this great song in the second act that is just this release for this character that every woman in the audience is going to, I would not want to be any of their dates or husbands. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> But at the same time, there's the enjoyment of, you know, someone like Frank Hart, who behaves in a way that, you know, I mean, it's sort of everybody wants to let the demon out of the box now and again. Dolly was talking about how when she was writing this, that she was acting out all the parts. And when she gave an illustration of the part she was acting out, she didn't choose one of the women. She sort of showed how she was imitating your character. How does she write for Frank Hart? She said she tried she very write, hard you know to write for her character, and she, um, for a moment she was that character. This is what I'd say that she writes for every character, and I think it's the most important thing about the show that we're about to do. She writes unapologetically. There's no apology for what we're going to say. Frank is who he is, and she writes for him very boldly. He's got balls. And she writes that in the show. I mean that. In a, in a time period where commercial theater has become very expensive and at the same time very streamlined and hopes for a large audience, her music is very honest. It's a little dirty at times. It's very witty. But it's very... It does not apologize for itself. Is it different from the Dolly Parton music most people are familiar with? Yeah, but you know what? Most people aren't really familiar with her music because most of her really great music, other people sing. People forget that she's a writer as much as she's a singer. So no, it's not. But, you know, if I sat here and went through the list of songs that she's written, you'd go, oh, I didn't know she wrote that. You know, she's very good at writing in pretty much any genre she wants. Plus, you have Steve Remus. And you have the whole arranger and orchestration team that are going to take it even the step further beyond that. So. And her music isn't general. It's not, yeah. you know, an umbrella of, be- of just beautiful words and, and, and melodies. It's very specific. And there's a method to, I think, the way she writes for these characters, you know. So that specificity, I think, is very important to each of our characters and to this play. So, Mr. Kudish, tell me specifically then. Tell me th- the song that she's, or at least one of the songs she's written for you. Yeah. What it was like when you first heard it. How was it? Did she play it for you at the piano? No, she didn't play it. She sent you a CD. 